confident as you can be, and I'm telling you, almost distracted. Very interesting. I think Adler will try to throw that right hand he was holding as well. Yeah, when he walked into the lane, he should be looking at the crowd a lot. Just very relaxed. And, and down he goes from a left hand. the ring and inside and Giorgio Campanella will get him interested real quick hey he's hurt by the right hand it's not a knockdown but that right hurt him and he's as dry as a bone and he's slugging Campanella has six first round knockouts and jabbing his way in let me tell you this fight will be won by who lands the best left hook they're both landing them Still two minutes to go in this first round. And you're right. Oscar De Loy is dry as a bone. He does not look warmed up. The pro De La Hoya crowd trying to rally behind him. Well, if Giorgio Campanella needed anything to get over this scene, if he wasn't over it, that knockdown will help him. Sometimes that bunker mentality, us against the world, just focused in. Now, De La Hoya is starting to fight the right way. Throwing jabs out there, keeping Campanella busy so he can't just hit him. De La Hoya walked in to slug with Campanella and got a shot, didn't he? Well, there's a right hand that lands. And it all came because De La Hoya started using his skills, the jab and the combination. And, of course, is the second time he's been down as a pro, but that time he was hurt much more than he was against Narciso Valenzuela. Let me tell you, when Campanella cranks that left hook, Bob, he's got a good one. And that's the punch that hurt De La Hoya. Campanella's not done yet, believe me. He's going to land some more left hooks. We'll just see what effect they have. Still not a lot of snap on that jab from De La Hoya. But he's using it well as a range finder. And, you know, and see now, there's something he's got to be careful about, though, De La Hoya. He can't throw too many left hooks early in this fight because that will open himself up to, to Campanella's left hook. You saw Campanella throw it again. It's a combination. Everything that De La Hoya throws, the crowd will react wildly. Giorgio Campanella is making a fundamental error here. What he landed to knock De La Hoya out was a left hook. That's the punch he should go back to. He's not putting himself in position to throw that punch. And he's giving De La Hoya a pass here. Round number one in the books. What a round one as De La Hoya goes back to his corner for some instruction. Robert Alcazar couldn't be more precise in what he's saying. And there is why he's saying it. De La Hoya stood in front of Giorgio Campanella. And the reason that he wants him to box is because he stood in front of him and he got hit with left hooks. And he got hit with one specific left hook that really hurt him. And he traded left hooks. And we begin round number two. They touch the gloves. De La Hoya knocked down early in round number one. And as Al, you pointed out, it was the second time in his career that he's gone down in round one. It is indeed, but and this time, Bob, it was a much more powerful punch. As you look at the numbers in round one, and ironically, Oscar De La Hoya landing more punches before it was all over. And his trainer, Robert Alcazar, really stepped on the pedal, Al. And uh, between rounds one and two, the things that you had mentioned in round one that Oscar needs to do. Play with him a little, box with him a little. And the movement is important, as is the jab of De La Hoya. That's what I said in that first round before we heard Robert Alcazar. Look at the difference it makes. When you jab first, you can make those things happen. Now the left hook of Campanello is rendered useless. Campanello trying to play back a little bit. 
Then it's gone by in round two. Now, for Giorgio Campanella, we, we know what De La Hoya needs to do and what he has now started to do effectively. How can Campanella get past that? And that is to pull your way in, be as rough as you need to be, and just start cranking hooks to the body and the head. It's that simple for Campanella. You're not going to outbox Oscar De La Hoya. Don't throw the hook from outside like he's doing. Pull your way in. If you have to rush in head first, Bob, get inside where you can crank up those hooks. There's that jab. We saw it in the Olympics. We saw it in his professional career. When De La Hoya finds that, he's tough to beat. Extreme. He's almost impossible to beat once that punch gets in there. And I'm going to tell you something. I think Oscar De La Hoya was distracted at the beginning of this fight. Well, you I think his mind wasn't in it. And now he's starting to score against Campanella, and is Campanella resting on his laurels of that early knockdown? He doesn't seem to be doing anything to get inside. And De La Hoya now with the combination, and Campanella just not fighting back. Now, for Oscar De La Hoya, there's one pitfall that remains, and that is trading hooks with Campanella. He's got to be careful about doing that, but if he does all this, he'll get back to being in total control of this fight, which he is right now. And Campanella blocked off a couple of those punches on the inside, but there's the jab to start it all out. Well, it's obviously a different De La Hoya. When you jab, when you move... Oh, oh Campanella, hurt. delay reaction. He is hurt, and down he goes. Now, he was on his knee. I got to tell you, I take a point away from De La Hoya for hitting him when he was on his knee, but they're not going to do it. So each fighter has been down through the first two rounds. And Campanella still hurt. can only be saved by the bell in the last round, but Campanella does get up. And his corner is upset, saying he was hit after the bell. Well, their bigger claim is that he was hit when he was down before. As they talk to Giorgio Campanella in that corner, I think the one thing they are trying to get across to him is he's got to get on the inside. Now there's Delroy hitting away. You've got to take a point away for that. That is illegal and it's wrong, and I don't care who it is doing it, whether it's Oscar De La Hoya or, or, or anybody. You don't do that. It's wrong, and Joe Cortez was very late in getting in. Here's where they claim he was hit after the bell. I couldn't hear the bell, so I can't honestly say that. And we begin round three. De La Hoya was knocked down in round number one. Campanella in round two, and De La Hoya continues the barrage. Now, there is Campanella trying to get the hook in. A left and right score. Campanella is hurt, and out he goes again. This is a replay of the Valenzuela fight in which De La Hoya was sent down and came out with a vengeance. Another combination. Down he goes again, and a white towel comes out from his corner. That's it. That man, Campanella, provided anxious moments for this man, Oscar De La Hoya, early in the fight. I will be fascinated when we talk to him to find out whether, in fact, his mind was straight when he came in that ring because he just went in wildly and got nailed by Campanella. But in the long run, Oscar De La Hoya got the job done, didn't he? Yes, he sure did. The second and third rounds, he was very impressive, but you mentioned it beforehand. He looked distracted. Giorgio Campanella went down twice in that third round, and his corner threw in the towel as referee Joe Cortez came in to take a look, and let's take a look at the knockdowns by Oscar De La Hoya. So, let's look at the first knockdown from a couple of different angles. Oscar De La Hoya landing a good left hook. Now, that was the punch which got him in trouble in the first round when he was trading it with Campanella, but at this point, Campanella was very hurt. He had been uh, in trouble the previous round. And the hooks were valuable for De La Hoya, but they came at the end of combinations, and that's why they were safe to throw. 
And at this point, Campanella was just not able to really defend himself. And from any angle, it's just as bad for Giorgio Campanella because Oscar De La Hoya throwing combinations, and that's the key, Bob. When he's throwing combinations, he's a very tough man to beat. And finally, at the end of the fight, this was De La Hoya again throwing combinations. His man was rocked, hit him on the top of the head. His corner was already getting ready to throw the towel in. You saw it sneak in there. And for Giorgio Campanella, what started out so brilliantly in his first trip to the United States ends in defeat. I'm sure the De La Hoya camp has to be happy with the win, but you know Robert Alcazar, his trainer, has to be upset with the way he went about his business in that first round. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you something else. That's the second time in his career De La Hoya has hit fighters when they're down in a blatant fashion. It usually happens when he's mad. And I'll tell you what, in the future, they may not be so lenient. They may take points away for them. But this is the kind of boxing skill and power that is likely to make him a real contender in a lightweight division and possibly a champion. Well, he said this would be his final fight at 130 pounds. He retains his WBO Junior Lightweight Championship. There's Giorgio Campanella. He took De La Hoya down in round one, but then he went to school and was taught a lesson by De La Hoya once De La Hoya started using his jab, as you mentioned, Al. Well, that was the key. He listened to Robert Alcazar. He used the jab. He started to move a little bit more, and that did it. Here's Michael Buffer. The undefeated WBO junior, the lightweight champion of the world, the pride of East L.A., the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya.